This is the first coat here. You can start to see the second coat. happening, you know, this. but that's okay. That's I was just so upset with, I, I just thought it looked horrible and they were never going to use it. I just remember throwing my brushes across the room <laughs> in the middle of the night. I was just like, this looks horrible. There's something about being on screen <laughs> that gives you a little bit of immortality, I guess. So I'm very proud of that. It's a nice feeling, you know. It's uh, it's a good way to impress a date. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually uh, made the costume um, by hand, um, where I had a friend make the costume. That's correct. That's Jenny Joseph, and she was incredibly gracious um, and just wonderful about the whole thing. But it would be his next rather unusual client that would define him, the federal government, or more specifically, the U.S. Postal Service. It commissioned Michael to paint a picture of New Orleans author Tennessee Williams for a postage stamp it was releasing. You see, that little stamp actually begins as a full-sized oil painting. And at the time, Michael lived around the corner in the French Quarter from where Williams wrote the classic, The Glass Menagerie. I've always had this feeling he was kind of looking over my shoulder when I was doing the painting. <laughs> I mean, you always want to put stuff in the background to kind of... I always try to add something and to tell a bit of a story with the paintings. And it was very successful. I think it's one of the best, I think second to Elvis. It's the best-selling stamp in U.S. history. I mean, he just had such a dramatic face. I mean, he really looked like the classic. But the body and the torso and everything else, I and I was always attracted by Poe's face, how he looked. Um, he looked so much like one of his creations. He had a very um, romantically handsome, sad, tragic face. And they said, sure. And believe it or not, there were two other people writing the same book at the same time. <laughs> yeah. My friend Maria um, took pictures of me with a silly looking wig on in an 18th century costume. Unfortunately, I have the same hairline. <laughs> What did they say? That I would never make it as a painter. <laughs> so they kind of shuffled me off to the illustration department. But um, Have you sent them some copies of Time Magazine? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> a few stamps? No. <laughs> but, I mean, God, man, it was like. There's something just very beautiful about them, and I can't quite put it into words, and that's why I'm a painter. If I could put it into words, I'd be a writer. You get, like, you know, the phone doesn't stop ringing for weeks, but now it's just kind of, um, 
things that will look as good in 20 years as they do now. So I do try to make my stuff um, you know, um, as timeless as possible. 